In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a noise displacement patch using Max, Jitter, and JIT GL picks. This is going to be a slightly more intermediate video because I'm going to be going into JIT GL picks, which means I'm going to be going into the world of Gen, which has different rules and ways of thinking, but it is not that complicated, trust me. With this, we are going to use JitGL picks to create shaders, which will process these two images in order to create this distortion effect, which we are putting in our JIT world window. How this precisely works is that it is taking the second image, it is looking at the color values of this second noise image in order to determine how much distortion and to which direction the distortion is going to be on each pixel of the input image. With this idea, with noise displacement, you can do a lot of cool things. You can make it audio reactive, like I am doing right now. The amplitude of my microphone is affecting the severity of this displacement. And you can go into things like feedback or your custom noise functions to create even more intricate systems. And this is something we are going to be looking in the future videos. But for now, we are going to be looking at the basics, how to get these images, how to operate GLPEGs, and how to create a cool noise displacement effect. If I'm going to be working with textures, I need a valid jitter world context. So I'm immediately going to create jit.world. I'm going to name it displace and I'm going to give it the usual attributes. So size and FSAA and floating window style. If I don't have this, if I don't have a jit.world that is running, textures are not going to work. They're not even going to process through the max objects that are supposed to process textures. So it's very important that we have this JIT world running. And now I'm going to import the uh, images I have downloaded or created to do this noise displacement. And I have made two images. The first one is a well, it's just, it's just noise. It's just a noise function that I've taken from Touch Designer, which is a 3D Perlin noise. We are going to be talking more about noise and how we can manipulate it in the next videos. But for now, it's just good to know that this is, these are just a bunch of random values, but they are not too random. And we are going to be using these as our guideline for displacing the main image, which is this nice picture of a city. I have no idea which uh, which city this is, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you know which city this is, do let me know. But it does not matter which city this is for this patch. What matters is that when we import these pictures, they are automatically loaded into an FPEG object, which will display an image. And it will also do another cool thing, which is to send out a jitter matrix when we are banging these FPEG, when we are sending a bang to these FPEG objects. So if I create a jit.pwindow, which would display the incoming jitter data, I can connect the outlets of these objects to my jit p windows and uh, well, nothing happens. It hasn't received anything yet, but sending a bank to these images are going to send out these jitter matrices. This is going to be very useful when we want to dynamically send and modify this data. Now we are going to be working with textures, not jitter matrices, but textures. And there are a few ways of taking these jitter matrices containing images into textures. And here working with textures means that we are working on the GPU, which is much more suited in processing and you know working with image data. And there are a few ways of doing this. I can create a JIT GL texture and I can put the matrix inside that uh, JITGL texture and then creating a JIT.P window. I mean, JIT.P window, there we go, is going to display that texture. In our case, it's going to be the exact same result. But instead of doing that, I can just skip a step and create my JIT.GL.PIX. And JITGL PIX uh, generates pixel processing shaders from a Gen patcher. This is one of the Gen family of objects like JITGen, JITGL PIX, uh, Gen, Gen tilde, MC.Gen. These objects, as we will see, use a slightly different way of working, but they are capable of much cooler, much more in-depth things. And JITGL PIX deals with textures, right? It expects textures as inputs, and it will always send out a texture as a result. But Lucky for us, JITGLPix also accepts JIT jitter matrices. 
right? So if we send these jitter matrices, they are automatically converted in into textures. They're processed inside JitGLPix and they are sent out as textures. And I'm, you know, you know uh, Jen, the world of Jen is a complicated topic. It's very in-depth. Like I've said, you can do super cool things with it, but it takes a while to learn and get used to. So I'm going to be focused on precisely what we need to do to achieve noise displacement using JitGLPix. In the future videos, we are going to be using these Gen objects more and more and more. Now, by default, JitGLPix is going to have a very specific operation built in, which is to add up the incoming two images, to add up the incoming two textures. So I can send the right one first and the left one second. And well, if I zoom in, the image is going to disappear, but you can see it's pretty much a mix of these images. And we can see this operation if we lock the patcher and double click on JGL picks, which is going to open this sub patch like window. This is the gen patcher. As you can see, it looks pretty much like a regular max MSP patch, but even though it looks very similar and the logic of, you know, working the workflow is very similar, there are a few rules that are different. So for one thing, you know, in one, into, out one are not really objects in regular Mac. So these are specific to gen objects. And in, you know, in the world of gen, for some reason, instead of calling these objects, these objects are called operators. So we are going to be dealing with operators. The most important thing about JitGLPix or JitGen is that whatever we have inside this gen patcher is going to be applied to every single pixel in the incoming texture. All of the pixels are individually going to go through whatever process we define inside JitGLPix. So if I just take the outlet of INV1 and connect it to OUT1 and I bang this, it's just going to take this image and it's going to send it to the output. If I do it with INV2, I still need to send a message to the first inlet to trigger the event, but it's just going to send out the second image, right? Each pixel is going in through here, you know, nothing happens, it goes to out one and it's displayed as such. Now for displacement, we are going to use a specific operator that is called sample and sample is going to sample a matrix, in this case, a texture. And sample requires two inputs. The first inlet expects an input matrix or texture to sample as in which image am I going to sample? So we can just take in one, which contains the picture we want to sample. And the second inlet expects a normalized sample coordinate. So this is a, a 2D vector, if you know what uh, 2D vectors are, or two values, if you don't, that are pretty much normalized coordinates, meaning that they go from zero to one. The first value is going to be the, the x value. So a zero is going to be left, uh, one is going to be right. And the second value is going to be the y value, meaning zero is uh, top. So the top, yeah, zero is top, one is bottom. Right, so for example, if I create a vector by using the vec operator, and if I say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and if I con connect this here and I run this JGL picks again, we are going to get only one color because the, each incoming pixel is looking at uh, you know whatever value the middle pixel is in the incoming image. It doesn't matter which pixel they are, they're just looking at the value of the pixel that has 0 0.5, 0 0.5 coordinates, meaning the middle of the image. This might take a bit to get used to this way of thinking, but we can do a lot of cool things if we think about the coordinates of pixels and sampling different textures together. Another important operator in JGLPix is the norm operator, which gives you normalized coordinates of input matrix. And this is really cool because this value is going to be different for each pixel. As I've said, JGLPix processes each incoming pixel one by one. Each pixel goes through this process on their own. So norm is going to return, it's going to give a different value depending on which pixel is getting processed. If it's the first pixel, the one at the top left, it is going to give you zero, zero. If it's the bottom right pixel, it's going to give you one, one. If it's the middle pixel, it's going to give you 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and so on, and so on. So by putting this into sample, we are kind of doing the same thing as connecting in one to out one. 
you know, the, uh, the image comes in, we get the coordinate of the pixel that we are processing. It looks at the incoming image, it's, you know, adopts that pixel and that value is sent out one, which pretty much means that, you know, whatever you're putting in is whatever you are receiving. But if we are doing this, if we are using the system, it means that we can modify whatever is coming out of norm according to the second input in order to create displacement effects. So here is the kind of algorithm we are going to implement. I want to take this second image and I want to take apart its red and blue values. I want to make it so that the red value, so in each pixel, the amount of red there is, determines the offset of the coordinates of the equivalent pixel on the left image. So let's say we have the top left pixel on the first image and the top left pixel on the second image. We look at the amount of red in the second pixel, I mean in the second images pixel, and when we use sample, we give an offset to that value according to how much red there is. So maybe instead of sampling the top left pixel, the top left pixel instead samples, you know, a pixel a bit more to the right, so it looks a bit off. If that doesn't make sense to you, maybe seeing it in action will help. So let's start by uh, well, taking apart these different values. Now, by default, these textures are going to be a 4D vectors, right? They're going to contain the reds and green and blue and alpha values of each cell. So we need to use the Swiss operator to unpack the, these uh, components the income of the incoming pixel. So I can type Swiss R to take apart the, uh, the red value of the incoming pixel and Swiss B for the blue value. And in the world of textures, in the world of JGLPEX, these values always go from zero to one. They are all normalized coordinates. And to make things more interesting, instead of making it go from zero to one, I want to make it go from, let's say, minus 0.5 to 0.5. So I can simply subtract 0.5 from these values. Right, I can also type it here in the comments. Uh, let's see, so I can say, the incoming value is going to be from 0 to 1. So we can subtract 0 0.5, which is going to give us a range of minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. We can play with these ideas a bit more a bit later. Okay, so we are getting these values, right? And then what I want to do is I want to pack these two values into a 2D vector, right? I want to pack these values together. So I'm going to use the vec operator. This is very much like the pack operator, pack objects uh, in regular max patches. So I need to give it two zeros to kind of initialize it. And then I can put in these values in the inlet of VEC. Okay, so now we in fact have two 2D vectors. Right? We have these coordinates and we have these offset values. Let's call it offset vector. Now, to apply this offset, what I can do is I can add the, this offset vector to my normalized coordinates vector. So now when a pixel is coming in, it's also going to look at the equivalent pixel in the second image. It's going to get these values. They're going to be normalized. And I'm going to add this to the coordinates of my pixel. So I will be sampling a different pixel if you know these coordinates will be different than the norm. Let's see how this looks. If I bang this here. Whoa, okay, this looks very complicated, doesn't it? Let's uh, let's make it look a bit bigger. But we are achieving noise displacement. Look, look at how cool this is. This is a bit too much, but it has a very cool look that we have taken this original image and we have distorted it according to this second image. But it is indeed a bit too much and I want to scale it down a bit. So what I can do, for example, is when I get these values, I can multiply it with, uh, let's say, um, 0. 0. 0. 0.1. So instead of get, getting a value that goes from minus 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.5, there uh, it goes from, let's say, minus 0. 0.05 to plus 0. 0.05. So the amount of distortion will be less if I do this, right? So one tenth of the previous amount. And yeah, now it looks uh, even better in my eyes. It looks a bit more, a uh, bit more distorted, but not so much distorted that we have no idea what is going on. 
And if I want, I can make this process continuous by utilizing the second inlet of JitWorld, which is going to send a bang for each frame, right? So if I kind of connect this here, it's going to be continuously sending this message, which means this JitGLPix is going to be continuously processing whatever is defined in this gen patcher. You might now notice that there are these blobs at the top, right? Well, what is going on? I mean, they don't really exist here, but for some reason, they exist here. Well, that happens because displacement is probably sending a value that is higher than one or lower than zero. And by default, what sample does is it kind of wraps around the uh, the values. So if I'm going over one, it's like I'm starting over from zero. Or if I'm going below zero, it's like I'm starting over from one. And if you want to prevent this, you can give the attribute bound mode to sample. And I, I believe if I give it the bound mode clamp, it is going to, there we go, it is going to make it so if it's above one, it just stays at one. It's clamped at one. And if it tries to go below zero, it stays at zero. So it's clamped to zero. Now, one more thing I want to do is I want to make this amount of distortion dynamic, right? And I can do this by declaring a parameter in my gen patcher. Now, this is one of the very cool things about these gen patches that you can control it from outside of the uh, outside of the gen patch in the regular max patch that we are creating. So for this, I need to use the operator param, short for parameter, and then I need to name this parameter. And I will just name it scale. And then I can give it an optional default value and I'm going to make it 0.1. And now another cool thing I can do inside the gen patcher that I cannot do in max is giving this scale value as a regular value. So if I say, multiply the incoming value by scale, JitGLPix is going to understand, oh, okay, this guy probably is referring to the parameter scale that he has defined as 0.1. So here we go. I'm going to multiply it by that. And if I change this parameter, and I will in a few seconds, then this multiplication is going to change as well. So after I have declared a parameter in JitGen, I can get out of this patch, I can create a message box that says scale, so the name of my parameter, dollar sign one, so that I can send it a number value, a floating point number goes in here, so this message becomes scale zero, or scale zero point whatever I type in there, and this can go into JIT GL picks. So now if I'm changing this value, you can see that the amount of distortion is changing as well. Instead of putting it here, we can also visualize this in our JIT world window since we already have it. And we can do this by creating the object JIT GL video play with the attribute transform reset to, I believe. So if I do this, there we go. Now it is on our window, which also looks really nice like this. And now I, I'm changing the scale value to get, you know, different amounts of distortion according to my displacement map. And if I want, I can just make this audio reactive very simply and quickly by creating an easy ADC. I can get a, let's see, peak amp with the argument 55. And then I'm going to make sure my audio status is set correctly. The input device should be Scarlet Solo. There it is. So now whatever is coming in through my microphone, the amplitude is being turned into a floating point number. So I can feed this into my scale. And now my speech is controlling this shader, this uh, JIT GL picks patcher that we have created. If I want, I can smooth this over a bit by using slides, let's say 1010. And I can put it as an intermediate object here. And now it looks even more smooth. So you can add your own music to this. You can maybe make your speech control the distortion of something. This is just the beginning of this world of noise displacement. Okay, I think this is a good place to stop for now. In the next video, we are going to look at this second picture here, this noise displacement, and we will see how in Max we can create our, uh, our, own, our own unique noise functions by using JIT GL BFG. Until then, thank you for watching.